Yeah, he coming. Brother. Hey, fuck you.
in order that they can put their lives back together. Our nation is in crisis, and we all know the crisis we're going through. Times have never been as hard in Ghana as they are today. Our people are sinking into poverty. A recent report says that 55% of Ghanaians are living in poverty. We've never had this high percentage of Ghanaians living in poverty before. And our assemblyman was quoting some statistics. He said almost 2 million young people, youth, are not in education, they are not in employment, they are not in training. At the age when you are a young person, you should either be employed, that is if you have finished school, you must be working. If you are, you are not employed, you must still be in school educating yourself. If you are not in education, you should be in training to earn a skill to be able to go into the world of work. Two million young people are sitting idle at home, not doing any of these three things. This is a very dangerous uh, statistic to, to, to witness. And so we are sitting on a time bomb in this country. When NDC was in power, and unemployment was 8.2%. Today, unemployment is 14.7%. And aside from this, life is hard for everybody. For our women and other people who go to the markets. I mean, we have the highest food inflation, almost, in, uh, almost the highest food inflation in Africa. Prices are um, there. You know, but the dangerous thing is, when you are ill, and you know what is wrong with you. It is halfway towards a cure. If you are ill and you know it's malaria, you are halfway towards curing yourself of malaria. If you are ill and you know it's typhoid, you are diagnosed, you know it's typhoid, you are halfway towards getting the cure. Unfortunately, the people who have caused this economic crisis do not even realize there's a crisis. Because when you hear them say they are the best government and that even in Kuma doesn't come. It shows that they don't even really understand the situation in which they are Because if they understood the situation, we're still five months from the election. There are urgent measures that they can take to ameliorate the situation. You don't go saying, vote for me, and when I come, I will do this. You can do it now. You say you rationalize taxes. Five months for the election, you can rationalize, there's enough time to rationalize taxes. All the promises you are making, you have enough time to start implementing them right now. And say, no, vote for me first, and then I will come and do it. What they did in 2016, they can't do again. They say you can fool some of the people some of the time. You can fool all the people some of the time. But you can't fool all the people all the time. And so, Ghanaians are widely awake. We are wide awake. And this time, we cannot take Ghanaians for a ride. Those false promises are not going to work. If you have anything to do for Ghanaians, you have enough time to do it now. You have five months. If you can't do it in five months, there's no guarantee that you can do it even if we give you four years or eight years. And the other time I took time off to debunk that useless thing about four years and eight years. If you follow the logic of what he says, oh, he has only four years, I have eight years then it means no president should get a second term. Because it says, if you get a second term and you have only four years, you will be accountable to the people. So then, we should check the constitution and say, every president should do one term and go away. Because your second term, you will be accountable. You, know, you see, there is no logic in what the person is saying. It means when you are saying four more for Nana, you knew that Nana was going to be unaccountable. And so, just this means that, and let's look forward. We have solutions for the problem and we have the experience to implement those solutions to rescue this country from the crisis in the country. Where Ghana has reached, we need a steady, experienced hand to turn our fortunes around. If you have two buses, 
and you have a driver's mate who has been an apprentice to a driver sitting in one of those buses and you have an experienced driver who has driven you know, several times back and forth to your destination and back which of those two buses will you sit in? and so the person himself says he's a driver's mate he doesn't have a license yet so he should work and get a license first and then after he gets a license he can come so that they can go into the world of work. And that's why we're talking about the National Apprenticeship Program. For the young people who have finished JHS and SHS and have not advanced into a tertiary education, they need to get a skill to go into the world of work. A skill is always important for any person. Because whether you continue to stay in your uh, home constituency or you move to any part of the country or you even go outside the country if you have a skill your chance of getting a job is higher there are many people who want to jaka but if you are jaka you jaka with a skill then i think most of you have heard about jaka if you are jaka jaka with a skill because if you jaka and you are a capital you get a job to do if you are jaka and you are missing you get a job to do if you are a and you are a welder, you get a job to do. Yeah. So acquire the skill so that you can get employment in your own country. But if it happens that you find yourself outside this country, that skill will help you to get a job. Yeah. And that's why I want to introduce the National Apprenticeship Program. I hope that all those who are not in education, not in employment, will take advantage of it and at least get training in a skill. And so whatever you want to do, we will make sure that the master craftsmen are paid to give you that training free of charge. <laughs> and the next critical issue is the issue of small and medium enterprises, which are run particularly by our women. Our women are in trade, in commerce, and so on and so forth. And most of the time, banking. And when this government decided to do the banking sector cleanup, they added this important bank into the sector cleanup and shut it down. So now there's no specialized institution giving credit to women in this country. And that's why we say when we come back into office, we're going to establish the National Women's Bank. And we'll focus on giving small credit to women in small and medium enterprises. Women are an important part of our economic prosperity. If you go into several sectors, it is the women who are driving progress in those sectors. And so if we put our money where our bath is, with our mothers and our sisters and our wives, so that they are able to earn an income, it will improve the welfare of our children and our husbands and our brothers and, 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 and our kids. And so it's one of the issues that we take up. The 24 hour economy, I've explained it so many times. It is only those who don't want to understand who don't understand. Otherwise, if you say, oh, but some people are doing it already, we want everybody to do it. And so the point is, some people are doing it already, but they are doing it voluntarily because the owners of the employment believe that they can optimize their profits by adding more shares. So they're doing it voluntarily. There's no policy. And I'm saying that NDC is coming to introduce a policy that will incentivize more people to add on additional shifts, to create more employment for young people. What is the to understand about this? And so let's uh, work hard to gain victory from NDC. The point is, the best signal we can send to the world that Ghana is ready for a turnaround 
they should vote out the MPP. Yes. Then we'll be taken seriously that we want to do a turnaround. A vote for the MPP candidates in this 2024 election is a vote for a third term for Nana Akufuado. Why they are desperate to break the eight is to do a cover-up of the eight years of atrocities that they have uh, uh, inflicted on Ghanaians. And so they need a pliant vice president to come and inherit them so that all the loot, all the corruption, all the stealing will be covered up. But it won't happen. The good people of Ghana will be better. And so when we come, we're going to hold them to account. We'll investigate the alienation of those state properties and those lands. And we will sanction those who have unjustly taken our lands, who repossess some of those lands. And aside from that, it will give recommendations on how the Adanwe lands should be handled. And so the Commission of Inquiry will be set up. And me, Ben, now, when the time comes, you will be encouraged to present your petitions to the Commission in order that investigations can take place and the appropriate restitution is made to you. In this constituency, you have uh, many problems. I think uh, the spokesman for the traditional uh, uh, authorities mentioned one of them, and that you have all the tertiary institutions in this country. You have UPUSA, you have my former University Legon, and Accra Technical University, and all the others. But there's no secondary school in the constituency, unfortunately. And so, like you said, when we come, we'll build a community-based school yes. in this constituency. and then come back again for tertiary education. You'll be able to attend your own secondary school here, and then from there continue. <laughs> this government has given up. They have no solutions to the issue of flooding in Accra. As for now, the least rainfall leads to flooding, even in areas that didn't use to flood before. There are many places where we've never experienced floods. Today, when it rains, those areas get flooded. And so, I've said that we need an engineering solution to this problem. Apart from a human solution, which is to stop avoid littering and throwing things into the drains and so forth, we also need an engineering solution. And so, NDC is going to commission the best hydro engineers to find out how we can alleviate the flooding problem in Accra. The problem with flooding, for those of you who study geography or hydrology, is if you look at Accra, to the north you have the Rapim range of mountains. And a lot of streams come from that range. When it rains in the Rapim range, that's why sometimes in Accra, it doesn't rain, but yet you see that water is coming. It's coming from the eastern region, from the Krapim, and uh, some of the rivers there. And those, that water is flowing towards the sea, through the Sakumo stream, the Odor stream, and all the other streams that you see going to the sea. Now we've come to build a city between the mountain and the sea. And so when the water is coming, it encounters the city. And we will not, not let the drains open, people are building on those drains and impeding the flow of the water. And once you impede the flow of water, it will back up and it will flood. And so we need to find an engineering solution to this problem, otherwise it will continue forever and ever. And so NDC will come and look at that and resolve this issue. And then finally, we all want to rescue our country from the clutches of this rapacious MPP administration. And before we can do that, we must win an election. We all know what happens during elections, especially in this your constituency. There are times when I believe you could have won the election, 
But because you let your guard down, you lost it. It is not going to happen again. All we are asking from you is vigilance. We shall send you the resources. We are going to launch the campaign soon. And once we launch the campaign, there is no rest for any of you. We are going to go from house to house continuously, from now till December 7th, to all the markets, to all the shopping centers. We are going to go and we are going to campaign so that John Melo gets elected as a member of parliament. And so we will send you the resources to prosecute that campaign. As soon as the campaign is launched, we're going to send you what you need, including money. So I don't want any excuse that we didn't have money to fuel our vehicle or we didn't have money to do that. We're in opposition, we don't have money, but the little we have will share amongst all the constituencies so that we can campaign. Send the message to every corner. You have the leaflets, you have all that it takes to be able to do the campaign, and you must go and give out the leaflets and give the NDC message out. But aside from the campaign, you can campaign as best as you want. You can have the best message, you can have the best candidates. On the D day, if you are not vigilant, you will lose the election. You have a good candidate, we're going to send you the resources. Your message is good. All that we require from you now is vigilance. And so please, the party has asked for people who want to volunteer to be trained as party leaders. Kindly make sure that you send your best people. What I said was that preferably, if we can find them, we want people with a tertiary education. I didn't say we are recruiting only people with a tertiary education. I said, preferably, we want people with a tertiary education. But there are people who probably are in SHS who are bright and can be trained to be electoral agents. I haven't said we should refuse them. What I'm saying is that the election today is more complicated than it was in the past. In the past, we needed people to sit there to prevent imposters. Now the issue of imposters is resolved by the biometric verification machine. But you must have somebody who can understand that the number of the biometric verification machine must be the same as the number of ballots in the box. And when you're filling the you are filling the page sheets, you must see it's like algebra. C uh, C uh, uh, five plus A four plus three must be equal to this. If you don't have the know-how, there's no way you're going to understand when those figures are put on the pink sheets. And that's what I'm saying, preferably we can find people with a tertiary education, or people who don't have a tertiary education but have the uh, uh, cognitive sense to be able to decipher the pink sheets and be able to train as proper polling agents. Let's find those people. And so all of you who are accountants, all of you who are architects, all of you who are professionals, let us know the polling station where you vote, so that on that day you are not just trying to vote and go away. You will vote and sit there on behalf of NDC and make sure that the right thing is done. Because I believe that if this election is transparent and fair, I have no doubt in my mind that NDC will win it. And so finally, you have the Dominic Dumelo. He is known across the length and breadth of this country. Everybody knows the kind of person he is. He's not only good in the career that he has chosen for himself, but he does a lot of other things. Even without being the MP, if you see some of the things that he's done in this constituency, it is commendable. He's a farmer, and I've been. He's my fellow farmer. And I know that he cares about the young people. I present him to you, I put him in your hands. It is you who can make him the member of parliament. And I know that with his work rate, even not being a member of parliament, if you add the mantle of parliamentary leadership to him, he will make sure that this constituency becomes.
becomes a model for the rest of the world. Thank you very much. Leave it alone and leave it alone. I'm going to ask you to ask me 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 to ask me to ask you to ask me 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 to ask Thank you.